The artifact we have here is a bucket from the 1940s, and you note suds for scrubbing written on the outside. Now what if I told you with this one regular seated wood bucket, we can tell a story of political corruption, theater, oppression, populism, and a figure not just larger than life, but large by any measure. Now, my name's Eric London. I'm the Museum Services Curator here at the Alabama Department of Archives and History. And today, I'm going to tell you about the Suds for Scrubbing Bucket. Now, our story center is primarily on one figure, Big Jim Folsom, former two-term governor of Alabama. Now, Big Jim came by that nickname honestly. He was six foot eight. He wore size 16 shoes, though every now and then he would claim that they were a mere size 15 and a half. Obviously, Folsom wasn't always Big Jim. He was born in 1908 near Elba, Alabama. His father was a well-known county politician, and this is where Folsom would have inherited his love of politics. Now, Folsom's father died when Folsom was 11 years old, and he would have been raised by John Dunavant. His uncle on his mother's side, he would have become his father figure. Dunavant was a member of the Populist Party here in Alabama, and this connection molded Folsom's political beliefs. As a populist, Folsom supported taxes to fund social programs, education reform, fair wages, labor unions, agricultural reform, pensions for the elderly, and an end to the convict labor system. Folsom also argued for better treatment for African Americans and supported the end of voting discrimination, including the poll tax, which had been used to keep both black and white citizens from voting for decades. Folsom's opponents were no pushovers. At this time, Alabama politics were controlled by a group of men known as the Big Mules. Now, the Big Mules was an alliance between the major corporations, particularly centered in Jefferson County, and the owners of the largest plantations right around the Black Belt. Big Mules opposed everything Folsom and the populace supported, as they feared that a populist wave would threaten their hold on the reins of power and the status quo in the process. Indeed, the Big Mules had such power that they were able to build in support for their agenda, such as increased segregation and voting discrimination, into the 1901 Constitution. Well, Big Jim decided to take the big mules on in state government and ran for governor in 1942. He lost his first attempt running a fairly traditional campaign, but in 1946, he ran again. And this time, he did things a little differently. First, Folsom decided that he needed to introduce more elements to this campaign that appealed to the common man. The first thing he would have done was he incorporated music. Everywhere he traveled, he took a string band with him that played bluegrass hits. These were the Strawberry Pickers. Now they would travel to events in two cars, the strawberry pickers would always get there first and he would simply listen for the sounds of bluegrass in the air to find out where he was supposed to speak that day. Now the second thing, Folsom realized he needed a catchy phrase to unite his supporters. So he settled on suds for the scrubbing. When he would go to these events and he would talk, he would bring this uh, mop and bucket on stage and he would say that he was gonna clean out Montgomery, he was gonna clean out state government of crooks and criminals. He would then pass around the bucket in the crowd and tell the audience that they needed to provide the suds for his scrubbing. These efforts ultimately proved successful, and Folsom was governor from 1947 to 1951, and then again from 1955 to 1959. Now, as governor Folsom experienced mixed success, he did try to fight for the common man in office. However, he would have been stifled at nearly every turn by the big mules and the political establishment that they still controlled. Further hampering Folsom would have been some of his own personal excesses and corruption even within his own administrations. The phrase, something for everyone and a little bit for Big Jim, would have been widely circulated by his political opponents. Nevertheless, in 1962, he ran for governor again, this time losing to George Wallace, who in this period had politically weaponized racial tensions following the Brown v. Board of Education decision. After his defeat, Folsom never wanted to stop being involved in Alabama politics, he ran for governor many more times, but was never again taken seriously as a political candidate and never again held public office. The legacy of Big Jim and the Populist Party is a complex one, marred by internal strife, external sabotage, nevertheless, part of a larger movement that still lives on today. By all indications, Big Jim really did consider himself the little man's big friend. Perhaps with more establishment support and suds for the scrubbing, Alabama history could have been different.